Thank you for the kind introduction. And uh, Mr. Dr. Sharma, Chairman, and uh, Sri Yogendra Deva, Co-Chairman, thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Just a bit of background. Uh, I've already uh, had the introduction, but I'd like to uh, share that uh, I do, I've actually crossed many rivers to get where I am today. Um, hydropower development in India. We've heard before several of the, uh, the statistics, but uh, re repeat them here, that only 25% of India's potential of uh, 149,000 megawatts of hydropower is utilised. In 2003, there was a 50,000 megawatt hydroelectric initiative set up by the Indian Prime Minister, which intended to stimulate sharing between public and private sectors. This was challenging for private developers uh, because th there was a rush on um, applications to the Central Electricity Authority. Um, and in those early years, only a few ac projects actually got past the DPR stage. There tended to be a, a compression of development time to 10 to 20 percent of the conventional time, which might have gone over 20 years uh, in years before. And uh, due, due to this sort of uh, time constraint, the, the often uh, there was a challenge for the, uh, the, uh, the, the development which often hinged on uh, geological conditions. And thus it was very important that a, an experienced engineering geologist should be part of a team. Briefly, the topics I've covered would be our role, stages of projects, the Indian approval system, because 70% of um, India's hydropower potential is from the Himalayan region. Um, I'll discuss some aspects of that. And then looking at site investigation and reporting and some of my personal case histories. Now, the role of engineering geology, uh, we all know uh, this, but I can briefly pass through some of the uh, issues which we do need to understand so that we can be an effective role and determine, that word, how we, how, what the outcome. We must understand all aspects of geology and geomorphology. We've got to identify issues and communicate effectively. The role should be to assess the project setting, consider main hazards and review materials for construction. The engineering geologist should be capable to have careful observations, be fit for the task and select and interpret data. Plus, have an appreciation so we can talk to the geotechnical engineers about soil and rock engineering, soil and rock mechanics, I mean. Um, the geologist is often part of the first team to visit a site and record the key features and alert the planners and assist with decisions. Now, just for... I'm an outsider, but this is my interpretation of what happens in India. So, and for some of the international people, there is, there is a, a process for project approvals that's been set by the CEA, Central Electricity Authority, to get techno-economic clearance. And there is a strong input also from the Geological Survey of in India, the Central Soil Materials Research Station, which is just nearby here in Delhi, the Central Water Commission, and where appropriate uh, seismic design parameter committee estimates. We go through various stages of reports from pre-feasibility, the detailed project report, the DPR, which we never have enough time to finish, um, detailed design, construction supervision, and on to monitoring. Now, back in um, 2007, the Asian Development Bank actually produced a, uh, a very interesting report, which it can, went through all the challenges. Very long list, but I just highlighted a couple there, which do, um, I think there's a pointer there. Is that right? Yeah, OK. Um, the, the gestation period and time for approvals was, was always a, always a, a difficult um, um, challenge. Environmental impact. And then geological surprises, which is a term which is brought up time and time again, and that we always get them. And then on to construction risks. So these, these are some of the issues that the engineering geology has to be confronted with. Now, as I said, 70% of India's hydropower development is in the Himalayan region through the main river valleys, the, the Ganges, the Indus, and the Brahmaputra, and their headwaters. The great arc of the Himalayas, uh, 
big areas where we where we, we work is through the um, the uh, the lesser Himalaya in sedimentary metamorphic sequences, and um, also through the the um, upper um, higher Himalaya with crystalline sequence. I'm going to give you a bit of a pictorial run through the Himalayas. Um, so we have, um, I think those lights shouldn't be on. Um, the, uh, there are um, the Himalayan foothills. This is in Arunachal Pradesh. Um, has um, uh, deeply dissected slopes with deep soils, quaternary ge geological features, challenges for slopes, and, uh, and, and with the larger rivers that run through this system. Moving on to the Lesser Himalaya, uh, where the slopes are very high and the um, uh, long, steep slopes. Oh, that's good. I hope you can see a nice, clear view of our beautiful backdrop there. Um, this is in Uttarakhand. And uh, steep gradients um, um, undercutting long, steep, the steep slopes. And this is where a lot of our projects are. The, um, I just thought I'd put it in because they're great pictures. <laughs> uh, the Greater Himalaya, in fact, uh, that's Everest, and this is um, actually near one of our projects in Sikkim, the Panan Hydropower Project. You look straight up past the, uh, the dam site, and there's Kanchenjonga right behind you. So they are there looking down on us. Over the ranges, into the, the um, um, rain shadows, the Tethys Himalaya, where a lot of weaker sediments, which also probably provide a lot of sediment input as, uh, into our rivers. Throughout all these areas, there are major uh, faults and thrusts. The uh, ma main central thrust, MCT, uh, cutting a, a, a huge uh, uh, topographic uh, slice through the Bhagirati River there in Uttarakhand, and uh, another offshoot of the Almora thrust forming a, a big um, escarpment. So in all of this, generally we find that our projects are in the heavily populated areas in the sub or lesser Himalaya. Um, is, the, the main rivers flowing down through there have their sources in the Great Himalaya, but they, and these are glacier fed, they have steep gradients um, with rapids, etc. Common landslides on the hillsides, and the, but the lower valleys are more mature with complex geomorphology, such as glacier fluvials and, uh, um, and, and stranded terraces on the upper slopes. And we also have to note that uh, near tectonic features are, are uh, a feature of past seismic activity. So I'll just briefly go through this table. This is in, in, in my paper, but because of time constraints, but essentially uh, what my aim here was to look at the characteristics which, which are presented to us, the consequences of these uh, um, characteristics, and some examples. So essentially, as I said before, we have to contend with steep valley slopes, with river channel form, often with braided streams, uh, always rock mass defects. In particular, we have large sequences of quartzites which have particularly close fracture intensity, providing challenges. Uh, various lithologies. Some projects, you see reports that says there's 12 different lithologies, and so we, we have to look at the possibility of stratified rock, alternating strong and weak materials. Um, uh, soluble rocks, limestones, etc. Deleterious minerals, which do affect our, our um, uh, dissolution in, 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 in uh, foundations or slopes um, and alkali reactivity for aggregates. Groundwater, one of the biggest challenges. We're always encountering groundwater because there's high recharge and high hydraulic gradients in these regions. And these, these affect our underground openings and seepages and foundations. And as experienced yesterday, seismicity is a big feature, and uh, so we do have to contend with that uh, carefully in all our projects. So the engineering geologist has to carry through um, a sequence of investigations. Idea that we always look at desk studies first. Often in India, I found that there was limited value from the large-scale geology. However, but the Geological Survey of India does provide excellent framework to reference stratigraphy and tectonic setting, and then we can move into the site. Reconnaissance studies have to be done first. Often we find that there's not, not even a topographic map and we have to create our own sketch map, um, constructing geological and geomorphological information which can enable early planning for the next stages of projects. 
the ideal sequence of investigations are surface mapping, then geophysics, then drilling and test bits and appropriate testing. Sometimes we're challenged because that doesn't quite happen. But I must emphasise that good drilling practices are a key to success. If not, there is failure to obtain the right information. We've got to have suitable core barrels, careful drilling and full-time supervision by a geologist. These guidelines are set out by the Central Electricity Authority, Central Water Commission and Geological Survey of India. They're thorough and they should be adhered to. But never forget there's also good international guidelines um, which add to the quality where necessary from the International Society of Rock Mechanics, the US Army Corps of Engineers and our very own IAEG. And then once the uh, investigations have done, the re geotechnical reporting does play a key role in early planning. This is the prime opportunity to present the facts and to clearly communicate the recommendations. The results of the investigation report must be well communicated in end meeting and in site visits. We all know that there's an expectation from design engineers. They, they want the best answer now. But the engineering geologist needs to ensure also that it all is the technically correct answer and is consistent with the chosen way forward. And this answer often determines how well the project will proceed. So I'll second part of my talk is to run through a number of case histories. Um, I've selected, uh, how much time have I got? Five minutes? <laughs> okay, I'll run through very quickly the, um, uh, some projects in eastern Himalaya, western and um, finish off in Sri Lanka. The Rongni Chu project in Sikkim was an example of a, um, a project where I actually went to the site first time with the driller. He wanted me to drill, the, 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 the client wanted me to select the drill holes having never seen the site. Anyway, I got there and we went for a walk down the river and uh, the, the suspension bridge from the previous photos there. This was the dam site, we found nice on the left bank and then suddenly RBM, that's a term here, riverborne materials and alluvium. Walked on down river, went up a tributary and then found uh, more alluvium. So with my handheld GPS. I walked around with the, uh, the walk-over survey technique and uh, produced a little map which was able to show this was the, what I found in the riverbank. Uh, more gravels on the other side. Ah, a paleo channel. So here was our, uh, our dam site with a planned intake right through a paleo channel. So very quickly in a couple of hours work we were able to determine um, this information. So early knowledge of this alluvial channel allowed for appropriate planning. On to another, um, this, this is actually a desk study of the NAFRA project in Arunachal Pradesh uh, where the Bichon River flows through um, quite uh, major desiccated, uh, uh, um, eroded terrain with steep V-shaped valleys. However, in looking at this map I found there was a suspicious flat area here. So, um, also examined the um, shuttle radar topographic mission 3D images and other satellite imagery and we were able to find that actually there was a, a mega landslide. Um, I, can, I, I sketched up a little plan, oh that was the SRTM, um, you can whiz it round if you've got the right technology to get, do, get, do a 3D rotation, but anyway, um, the, the um, uh, Drawing up from the satellite imagery, we found that there was a 700 metre high um, escarpment with 0.4 of a cubic kilometre of displaced material, which actually dammed the river in the past and le leaving a, a mass of colluvium on the far bank. It actually blocked it. There's a nulla flowing down here and it actually blocked the alluvium, so we had high uh, stranded alluvium here. And there was a, a lake had been formed because we found black clay lacustrine sediments. The challenge for this project was that there was a head raised tunnel was to go right through where the landslide is. And so the, the, what, the, what the outcome of this exercise was, we were able to get the geological picture on a large scale and then help the planner to decide, is his tunnel going to go under that landslide debris or will he have to relocate it? And there's a picture of the actual um, toe. So this is a photograph of, of, of this area here. Um, showing the scale of it in the topography. 
Now, moving on further down the um, Bitchom River is the large Kameng hydropower project of 600 megawatts. And this has got 14 kilometres of uh, head race tunnel. And uh, there was um, a, the, the second part of the head race tunnel actually encountered high uh, rate of flow from the face uh, and the crown, 5,000 litres per minute. It was sort of up in the Pabati scale there. Um, pressure we estimated to be about 50 kPa. Now we, we said, well, where's the water coming from? Is it from a, a local river or, um, or from geological structures? We grabbed the locally available map at the site, and this is the Tenga River near the, near the source. But we found that this river, although it was 220 metres away, it only had a 26 metres of head. I don't think that was enough to allow for the pressure of water at the inflow of the tunnel face. So while we were convincing the contractor that he didn't like, need to do his diversion of the river away from the potential inflow of the tunnel, saved him a lot of money. The flows ceased and our, we deduced that these flows are more like intersecting perched groundwater um, from a folded rock sequence. Um, I'll leave this as the, the last example because we're running out of time. Um, this, but this is very, uh, an very interesting project in that, that uh, um, allowed the Srinagar project had a high uh, excavation for um, a powerhouse, 60 metres high in, in weak uh, phyllite with uh, weak foliation, uh, thinly foliated. Um, the excavation went down with the support uh, being delayed and so unsurprisingly a lot of cracks started developing in the, in the um, shot creek that had been placed there. Monitoring stations were set up across the slope and um, then um, we found that there was actually a creeping movement. In fact, over a two-year period, we got 200 millimetres of movement. Now, in order to work out why this was happening, we did a, a structural geological review. Um, I was able, just a little block diagram here. The slope was 52 degrees and the foliation was dipping at 80 degrees. 80 degrees. So why was this failing? Um, so we had some uh, uh, worldwide expert help and there was a... Uh, an assessment that we probably were getting flexural deformation down the uh, foliation planes, and these were um, uh, like it was an, uh, forming what we what Cruden is calls an underdip cataclinal slope. So uh, the stereographic projection indicates that the foliation was here it was in a zone where, although it's dipping more steeply than the face, that's north this way, um, that you, we, we were getting this cataclinal movement. Now, just to explain what that is, um, we've got, uh, if there's a, a valley side, anaclinals where it's dipping away from the slope, normal toppling situation, cataclinal will happen in facing down the slope if um, the conditions allow it. And just to sort of show you quickly that the, the, our monitoring did go over a long period of time, 550 days we got movement, and then we monitored for another 200 days and work stopped. So I guess the lessons learned here that slope reinforcement and support should be taken concurrently with excavation and the engineering geologist should work closely in design and construction. So I'll just move on to the, uh, some um, conclusions which uh, I'll just highlight that you know, we, we, we talked about the, uh, the initiative to develop hydropower projects uh, and that, that there were many barriers which create challenges for engineering geologists. But the emphasis really is on an early input and compliance um, with the Indian government guidelines and regulations. So we need a high standard. And that we saw that the Himalayan geology does present many challenges. But with effective desk studies and early stage walkovers, we can allow for time to decision making <coughs> and determine the outcome. And we saw that from some of the, ex uh, the um, examples we gave, uh, which essentially say that you know, with, 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 with early work on site, good desk studies, being able to opportunity to monitor and with a good drilling practice we can get the right picture of the geology. So thank you very much.